Buffalo Bill Jr. Buffalo Bill Jr. Buffalo Bill Jr. With his little sister, Calamity. Buffalo Bill Jr. brings you exciting action. Thrills and fun Whoa. with Judge Ben Fair and Square, Wiley. There was a time when we had Indian troubles around Wileyville, just like everywhere else in the West. The Indians didn't like the white man moving into their country, and you couldn't blame them too much. But we learned to get along together, and we've had no trouble the last few years, except when a thieving ran a hand tried to get rich off the Indians and my old friend Polk Hanna. Polk had a government contract hauling supplies from the railroad at Wiley Junction, which he was supposed to deliver to the Coab Indian Reservation. But... Hold the wagon right where it is. But what's the matter? I ain't done nothing wrong, Tuxie. We saw an Indian up in the hills, and we want to get rid of him before we start to unload. us a bodyguard. The Indians are turning hostile. Hostile? You're loco. Where is Polk? Right back there. Get on your horses. I want to talk to him. It's the truth, Bill. When the Indians started getting hostile, I hired the Tulsa and his partner from down Black Rock Way. Just don't make sense, Polk. What would the Indians stand to gain by raiding your wagon when you're hauling supplies to them? I don't know. I, I never could savvy no Indian. Well, all right, I guess. But I advise you not to shoot any more Indians, stranger. We've been friendly with them. We don't want to start them on a war path. You take care of your business, and I'll take care of mine. Go ahead, Polk. Bill, looks like we're in trouble. We're not doing enough business to keep body and soul together. I can't understand what's making the ranchers get all their vittles and supplies and provisions over at Black Rock these days. Maybe this will explain it. Save money by trading at Black Rock. You pay only half as much as anywhere else for your provisions. Try us, Black Rock Emporium, J. Burke, proprietor. How does this bird do it? Must cost him as much to haul the stuff in as it does me. kid from Wileyville butted in. Friend of yours, Polk? You been talking? No. no not a word, Mr. Burke. You know me. Uh, I, I, I don't want no trouble. I just do what I gotta do. You make one wrong move and you know what'll happen to that brother of yours in Black Rock, don't you? Yes. Sure. I, I mean, I don't want time to get hurt. You don't have to worry, Mr. Burke. Hurry up and get about half of this load into my wagon. Told anybody you're giving up your freighting contract, Polk? No, sir. Except the government man. I gotta notify him. I know. Otherwise, keep your mouth shut. Yes, sir. Also, I'm leaving you in charge. Get this stuff over to Black Rock as quick as you can. 
I'm going into Wileyville. All right. Hello there, sister. You pretty good at that game? Well, I'm a champion, and my brother's a champion, too. Well, now, isn't that interesting? You know, it just so happens that I'm a champion myself. Maybe I ought to take you and your brother on. My brother could beat you or anybody. <laughs> Judge Wiley? That's me. I'm Jim Burke from over at Black Rock. Came over to talk a little business with you. What kind of business? I hear things are not going very well with you, and uh, I thought I'd do you a favor and uh, maybe take your stock off your hands. I didn't ask for any favors. Suit yourself, but you know you can't compete with my prices. I also don't know how you can afford to sell at those prices. <laughs> well, you got to be smart, Judge. You got to know how to get things so you can sell cheap. I uh, hate to drive a man into bankruptcy. A little girl tells me you're a pretty good hand at pitching horseshoes, son. I play a little. I'm pretty fair myself. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll play you a game for a little side bet of, say, uh, $50, just to make it interesting. How much was that you said you'd bet him, Burke? $50. That's what I thought you said. You heard that, Bill, and you too, Calamity. Mr. Burke, you're under arrest. What are you talking about? Gambling is against the law in Wileyville, and when you're tempting a minor like Bill there, that's downright serious. So if you'll just step before the bar, court will now go into session. I won't do anything of the kind. The judge is also the law here, and being his duly constituted deputy, I have to uphold it. You will. Court is now in session. Remove your hat, please. We won't waste time with evidence. We've all heard it anyway. You're fined $25. I'll get even with this kangaroo court. Oh, now, that's a very unneighborly thing to say, mister. After I just saved you $25. Saved me $25? Sure, you offered to bet 50 didn't you? Well, what's that got to do with it? If you step outside, I'll sue you. Court's adjourned. Pitch a few for Mr. Burke. Give me those here. And Calamity, you go in and get my tall trick hat, the tall one. Right. <laughs> ah, I've seen ringers before. Even thrown a few myself. No doubt, no doubt. But can you do it blindfolded? <laughs> Look, he made it. I don't have to look. I know he made it. <laughs> you haven't seen anything yet. I'm always so worried. If Bill misses, he'll knock the judge's tail. The only thing is, he never misses. See what I mean, Mr. Burke? You offered to bet fifty dollars. I only find you twenty-five dollars, so you saved the other twenty-five. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you never did bet in your life, boy. And that extra money will help some to make up what I'm losing. <laughs> White man's chief promise Indians much supplies. Indians only get half. And you think somebody's stealing the other half? Don't know. That's why Braves try to watch wagons. Well, Mountain Eagle, you know we're your friends. Now, you keep your men under control, and Bill and I'll try and find out what's wrong. Mountain Eagle trusts Judge. Judge better find out plenty quick. We sure won't waste any time. Supplies, and Burke has so much he can sell cheap. 
There must be some kind of connection. Well, there might be. But Burke has to get his supplies from Polk Hanna, and Polk's on us. Well, sure he is. But I think I'll ride over there and have a talk with him anyway. You guessed right, boss. The old man and the kid come up and talk to the head Indian. I can't take any chances with their nosing around. Get over to Polk's place and stick with him. Don't let him out of your sight until I get control of the freight line. All right. Bill. Howdy, folks. Judge and I had a little talk with Mountain Eagle. Did, eh? Come on inside while I unharness. Get yourself a drink of water, Chief. What's going on, folks? If I tell you something, will you tell nobody but the judge? You bet. I'm going to quit the freight run. My contract's up tomorrow. What happened? Mm, nothing. Nothing special. Well, who's going to do the freighting to the Indians? Anybody. Anybody? Well, all you need is a team and wagon that can make the run from uh, Wiley Junction to the Indian camp on time. you got something on your mind, folks. I just ain't feeling good. I, I don't want the freight run anymore. There'll be a government man at the Indian camp tomorrow to time anybody that wants to try for it. Yep. What are you doing here? Just talking to an old friend. Polk hired me as his bodyguard, and I aim to stick around and see that nobody bothers him. You better go, Bill. I, I'm feeling kind of peaky, but like I say. No, but Polk... You heard what the man said, didn't you? Get out! Now look... Didn't okay. I tell you to get out of here? Bodyguard, Tulsa. But he doesn't need one against his friends. He didn't mean nothing, Bill. Well, it sure felt like it. Well, anytime you need any protection against your bodyguard, just let me know. Calamity, stop that scratching. You better practice printing your letters. You know, Bill, if we could just figure out the connection between Polk giving up his freighting, the bodyguards, and the Indians... And don't forget Bert. Well, I know what he's doing. You do? Yes, Mr. Bert is going to try for the freighting contract. He's the only one who is. And how did you come by this invaluable information? Well, a man came in the store today and told me. What? Oh, didn't I tell you? The man works for the government. That must be the fellow that's awarding the contract. He is. Burke probably wants that contract so he can rob the Indians direct instead of having to hijack Polk. Oh, hold on, Bill. You can't prove that. Well, I can make a good guess. I bet he's got some kind of a hold over Polk. That's why Polk's so scared. He probably wants to get rid of Polk entirely. My gilded glory, that's a theory worth looking into. Tomorrow, I'm going to do some investigating at Black Rock. Investigating what? You'll see. I've got an idea for getting evidence. Well, then I'm going to drive Polk's wagon and keep Burke from getting the contract. That's easier said than done. Well, I can try. Anybody that wants a contract has to leave Wiley Junction after the train's in and then get to Mountain Eagles Camp first. Yeah, but you haven't got Polk's wagon yet. Well, then I'll get it. First thing tomorrow morning.
the harness on that team and hook them up to the wagon. Prado. Prado means right now. What are you doing in your night shirt? Oh, I'm feeling so poorly. I took to my bed. What are you up to? Well, I'm going to make the freight run with your rig. Save the contract for you. But I don't want it, Bill. I'm Mr. Betsy, I don't. Well, maybe the judge and I want it then. There's no time to wait. Help him with the harness. And you, Tulsa, move faster. Catch up with the boss while he makes his run. Something else might go wrong with that judge here, so I better stick around and keep my eyes open. Go ahead. Howdy, ma'am. Howdy. I'd like to get a, a bag of salt, please. All right. Right here. Here you are. Well, what's the matter? It's just salt. Yes, ma'am. But I'm a little bit fussy about my salt. I'm what you might call an expert salt taster. Well, you don't taste this till you buy it. Oh, now there's the one right there. There, if I ever saw it in my life, is a real honest to guy salt. Let him do anything to my brother Tom, will you? Your brother in Black Rock? No. Bert said he was going to kill him. Well, that explains a lot. Don't you worry, Polk. Even if I don't get the contract, we'll fix Bert. Then you better get Tulsa's gun and tie him up. Yeah. Here you come, Bill.
made it. <laughs> so did I. Salt. What's that for? Evidence, my boy. The salty old evidence. <laughs> But, Judge, when Bert threatened to hurt Tom and he's so helpless, I give in. Not being much of a fighting man myself. But that's no excuse. The court finds you, Polk Hannah, guilty of condoning blackmail, thievery, and general skullduggery. The fine for all of which is $100. I never seen that much money all at once. Just stop interrupting me. Now, you're old enough to know better than to give in to blackmail. When a scallywag threatens an honest man, he's always got the law to protect him. And you should have gone to the law. In this case, meaning me. But I... Stop interrupting me, I said. Now, taking into consideration and account the extenuating and ameliorating circumstances, the court suspends a fine. Gosh, thanks, Judge. Court adjourned. Now, are you ready to tell us the mystery about that sack of salt you gave to the government man, Judge? That is the best buy I ever made in salt in my life. You know, I figured that they take all the government marks off of everything they stole from Polk, and that they might get careless. And they did. You could still see a part of that government stamp on that sack of salt. I sure caused you a peck of trouble, didn't I? Yes. And, Judge, I think Mr. Polk ought to get a real fine, just like everybody else does around here. Well, all right. I'll let you set the fine then, Clamby. Mr. Polk, you're sentenced to write, I'm sorry, Judge, 500 times. And the court so orders. <laughs> now with his horse and with his gun, he's not afraid of anyone. There's no one quicker on the draw or quicker to defend the law. Buffalo Bill Jr., Buffalo Bill Jr. He's the son of a son of a gun. Buffalo Bill, Buffalo Bill, Buffalo Bill, Buffalo Bill, Bill Jr.